This lesson is for section 5.3, logarithmic functions. What we're going to be doing today is very similar to what we did with our exponential function section in 5.1. Um, we're going to be evaluating logs, including the natural log, which is similar to what we talked about yesterday with the natural um, exponential function. We're going to be solving log equations along with exponential equations. Um, and we're going to be graphing logs using transformations. So let's begin by talking about logarithmic functions. All right, first I'm going to begin by looking at the exponential function y equals 2 to the x. Now I'm going to graph the log function y equals log base 2 of x. Now this is some terminology here that you might not remember from last year, but I just want to get into what a log equation looks like, what a log function looks like. And hopefully you're noticing that it's actually the inverse of the exponential equation y equals 2 to the x. Now the reason why y equals 2 to the x has an inverse is because it passes the horizontal line test, right? Not only does it pass the vertical line test, but it passes the horizontal line test, which tells me that this exponential function is 1 to 1, okay? Because it's 1 to 1, it has an inverse. And that inverse is y equals log base 2 of x. Now, you can also see that by looking at the coordinates. So here are you know our key points that we pick on those three points, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, and 1 half, 1, 2. And after you see that inverse, you see that the inverse points here, 2, 1, 1, 0, 1 half, negative 1, are on the graph of its inverse. So we have a function here, and its inverse. And we see that every coordinate, its opposite point, has to be on the other graph. So x, y, if it lies on the function f of x, the point y, x, must lie in the function, the inverse function of f of x, okay, the inverse of f of x. So um, this is just a little bit of review from before, but hopefully to give you a better idea of what a log is. Now, if we take a look at the properties of our log function here, we have that its domain is all positives, and that's because if we go back to the original um, exponential function here, Notice how the range is all positive values, right? So when we go to the inverse, it would only make sense that the domain is now all positives, okay? Since it's one to one, we can only have the same corresponding y values become now the domain. The range of this function is all reals, okay? So it switches, it's basically the exact opposite of the exponential function. We have an x-intercept at one, zero, okay? And remember that the uh, y-intercept of the exponential was 0, 1. And that makes sense that it's going to change to 1, 0. There is no y-intercept because there is a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. There is no horizontal asymptote. So again, that's the exact opposite of what we saw with the exponential function. And our end behavior is um, the opposite as well. So as x approaches positive infinity, our function goes to positive infinity as well. Now as x approaches 0, like so, we go to negative infinity. So it approaches negative infinity. Now this is basically the exact opposite of our exponential function. So you can see that the, the similarities, that the fact that there are basically opposites here. Um, and that's because, again, going back to the whole idea of a one-to-one -one function, if it's one-to-one, -one, then the domain of f, okay, goes to the range, and that means that the domain of f inverse was the range of f. Okay, it's a mapping back and forth. So now this becomes the domain, and this becomes the range for f inverse. So go back and please fill out this information here um, using that uh, the table that you saw before. Now I want to talk about the algebraic definition of our log. Okay. Now this is a review of stuff that you did last year in 90s. So um, log form, this, can be turned into an exponential form. Um, b to the y equals x is the same as saying a log with a base of b. But the argument is x. This is called the argument. This might have been something that your teacher talked about last year. I like to say argument because um, then I know what you, or you know what I'm referring to. So for some reason we call this number the argument. Um, this is the base, b for base, and x here, or y, I'm sorry, is the exponent. 
okay? So you can go back and forth between these two um, forms, but it's just the inverse of an exponential equation, okay? So if we started with the exponential y equals b to the x, we would obviously switch for the inverse. So if this is f of x, then this is f inverse of x. So this is actually the log form, and if you were to write it as a log with base b of x, these two are equivalent, okay? All right, so let's practice this. Um, I think it'll make more sense as you see some problems, like for example here, let's write this in logarithmic form. Now this is an exponential equation, and I want to change this to um, a log form. So I have a base of b, right, 4, I'm sorry. So the log base of 4, the argument is n equals your exponent x. So this is how I convert from exponential to log form. And that would be my answer here. In problem 2, I have a base of 3. So I have log base 3. 81 is the argument. So 81 equals the exponent 4. And I'll let you guys try number 3 on your own. And you can check that with the key to make sure that you understand what you're doing. In number 4, I want to now convert something that's in log form into exponential form. So I take a look and I have a base of 5. So that's going to become the base of my exponential equation. 3 is the exponent, so this is 5 to the third, equals the argument 125. For number 5, I take my base n, so n to the y power should equal t. And I'll let you guys try number 6 on your own. Okay, so after you get the basic skill of being able to rewrite a log as an exponential or an exponential as a log, you're going to also be asked to evaluate logs. So we're going to use um, that, that basic skill that we just practiced with rewriting the log to evaluate it. Okay, So this is something with a base of 36, okay, and we don't know what this is equal to. So I'm going to call that question mark. I don't want to call it really a variable because setting it equal to x implies that this is an equation and this isn't really an equation. Um, and the easiest way I can explain that is to kind of go off on a tangent really quick and say like if I gave you 3 plus 5 and I asked you to evaluate that, you would tell me that equals 8, right? You wouldn't say, oh, that's x and that's x equals 8. That's not what I'm asking. If I were to ask you to solve for x, you would see an equation like this and you would say, oh, okay, x equals negative 1. But if I'm just solely asking you to evaluate something, this is not an equation, there's no unknown, it's just find out what that you know, sum or difference or product or whatever happens to be, um, what it actually equals. So we're just evaluating a log, so instead of putting an x here, I'm just going to put a question mark, but it really means the same idea. I don't know what that number is. So, coming back to here. I have a base of 36, and it's going to equal some number. So I'm going to write 36 to some power is equal to 1 over root 6, because this is the argument. Okay, So I just change this log form into an exponential form. Now I'm going to try to rewrite both sides of this, of this um, equation with the same base. And I notice that this can be written as 6 squared. So 6 squared to some power is supposed to equal if I rewrite this as 1 over 6 to the 1 half, I can bring that back up to the top by writing this as 6 to the negative 1 half. So now I have 2 to some power, or 2 times some power, okay, equals negative 1 half. If I want to get question mark or this power by itself, I would divide by 2, and I end up with this question mark equaling negative 1 fourth. So, to go back to my original problem here, the log with base 36 of 1 over root 6 is equal to negative 1 fourth. Now, a number 8, I'm going to evaluate the inside of this first using the same exact uh, method that we just solved in number 7. So, I'm going to say, okay, this is some power here. 9 to some power is equal to 1 third. So after I evaluate this, then I'm going to take the square of whatever this equals, okay? whatever that question mark ends up being. So I rewrite this as the same base. It's the same process over here. So 3 squared to some number 
is equal to 3 to the negative first power. I'm just rewriting 1 third as 3 to the negative first. Now I set those two powers equal to each other. So 2 times some power equals negative 1. Divide by 2 and I get that that number is negative 1 half. So the inside of this is equal to negative 1 half. And I'm taking negative 1 half now and I'm applying this, the square here, to get positive 1 fourth. So to answer the original question, this is equal to 1 fourth. In number 9, I want to go about this the same, whoops, the same way that I just did. I'm going to evaluate the log part of this um, problem. So this is negative 3 times the log of the cube root of 10. So I'm going to focus on this part first, and I can just drop down that negative 3 for now um, and keep that you know, off to the side here. And let's evaluate what log of 3 to the root 10 powers now, or the cube root of 10, sorry. Um, when it doesn't specify, and this might be something you remember from before, when it doesn't specify the base, for example here, then you're going to assume that it's the common base 10. Okay, so this is a log with base 10. So what this is saying is that this is equal to some number. 10 to some power is equal to the cube root of 10. So let's practice rewriting this on both sides. Well, 10 is already our base, so 10 to some power is equal to 10 to the 1 third power. So this, our original, has to be 1 third. So I come back to this portion here. Let me do it in blue. This is equal to 1 third. So I have my original number on the outside, negative 3 times 1 third to give me negative 1. Okay, next up we have number 10 here, and you see the ln of e cubed. All right, now this is an abbreviation for the natural log, and that's with a base of e. Okay, so log with base e is the same as the natural log. Okay, so this is equivalent to saying log base e of e to the third power equals some number. Now, when you're looking at this, you would rewrite this as an exponential as e, base e, to this some unknown power equals our argument, which is e to the third power. And notice that these two powers must be the same, so question mark here, what we're looking for, must be equal to 3. So I come back to here and I say, okay, that equals 3. Now, if I were to have given you the natural log of e to the fifth, and you do the same work here, you're going to end up with this equaling 5. The natural log of e to the sixth is equal to 6, and so on. I could keep doing this forever and forever and showing you the same steps here to solve. So eventually what I want you to recognize is the natural log of e, these are inverses of one another. The natural log of e, okay? Um, I'm sorry, log base e, I should have written that like this, log base e of e, these are inverse operations of one another, e to some power and the log of something are inverse operations, so they're going to cancel out, it's kind of like having 3 times 1 third, well of course that's going to equal 1, so this part here, the natural log of e is equal to 1, which is why we're left with just 6. Now, in solving log equations, we're going to try to turn these into exponential equations. Um, so what we're going to do is rewrite it using our exponential, fun you know, our um, conversion from log to exponential. So I would take our base, 4, raise that to the third power, and set that equal to our argument, x minus 5. Now when I evaluate and I try to get x alone, I would take 4 to the third power and add 5 to that. And since 4 to the third power is something that I should know, 64 plus 5 equals x, so I get x is 69. Now I want to make sure that I double check that this, when I plug it back in, gives a positive value here, 0 or positive. Okay, So this must be greater than or equal to 0, and that goes back to what we talked about um, in the very beginning, that the domain of a log function has to be positive, Okay, positive or 0, 0 and or sorry, I'm, you know what, it's just positive. So x must be greater than 0 here, okay? So always double check, and in fact it does give us a positive number because 69 minus 5 gives me 64, so I can um, 
uh, use that as a solution. If it wasn't, if it was like, let's say, negative 69, then I, this function here, x, has no solution. So this equation would have no solution if that produced a negative here in the argument. Okay, I want to mention actually why this can never be um, 0 is because if you were to take the base to some power, it doesn't matter what power that is, even if it was the 3 here, um, you can never make this equal 0. Okay, you can take 4 to the 0 power, but you will never be able to get, um, you know, any exponent. When you take a base to an exponent, you'll never get it to equal 0. So, I don't know what I was thinking. I must be going crazy. In number 12, let's use the fact that we know ln of e is equal to 1. So, we're left with 3x minus 5 equals 10. So, that's what I, I get if I know the shortcut here, that the natural log of e equals 1. But, let's say I didn't know that. I'm going to start with rewriting this as the log the base e of e to the 3x minus 5 equals 10. Now, in this, um, if I convert this to exponential, I have e, a base of e, raised to the 10th power equals my argument, which is e to the 3x minus 5. And notice here, in order for this to be true, 10 must equal 3x minus 5, which places us right back here to this um, starting equation that we came up with. Okay? But that's how you would do it, I guess, the longer way, um, if it makes more sense for you to rewrite the base. All right, so we solve here, and we get x equals 5. If we plug that back in, we still get, um, this is <clears throat> in the domain here of uh, this natural log. In number 13, this time, we don't have, you know, the natural log out in front. So this is almost identical to the problem in number 12. Um, but I don't want you to freak out about this kind of question here. Now, in this example, what you can do is take the natural log of both sides. So whenever you see e to some power, doesn't matter what it is, you can take the natural log of that to use the fact that the natural log of e is equal to 1. Okay, so you're going to take an inverse operation here, the natural log, on both sides. So now I end up with, since these are going to cancel, 3x minus 5 equaling the natural log of 10. Now the natural log of 10 is just a number, and now I'm closer to isolating x. So I want to get x alone, which means I'm going to add 5 to the other side. So I have 3x equals the natural log of 10 plus 5, and to isolate x all the way, I divide by 3. So I have the natural log of 10 plus 5 divided by 3. So this is actually, I think, the toughest equation that you're going to deal with because it requires you to think more out of the box here. You have to take the natural log of both sides in order to solve this question, um, and that will be the most efficient way to solve this question. Okay? I'm going to let you guys try 14, 15, and 16 on your own so that I can get to the next part. So make sure you check with the key. Um, some of these are a little trickier than the, the top questions, or some, some are pretty much the same, but uh, if you understood... 11 through 13, you should be able to do 14 through 16. So let's move on to the graphing. Okay, so we talked about how the um, log function is just the inverse of the exponential function. So that means that if I have any point on the, let's say I start with y equals 2 to the x, those points, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, and 1, 2, all flip and become 1, half, negative 1, 2, 1, and 1, 0 on the graph of log base 2 of x equals y, okay, because these are, again, inverses of one another. So that means I have some, um, a good basis to start when I try to graph these, these functions here, okay? So let's start with our first one. We know that this is just the inverse. We have a base of 3. This is the inverse of y equals 3 to the x. Now the points y on y equals 3 to the x, the key points that we know about here would be negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, and 1, 3. It's just by plugging in those coordinates right into here and getting these y values. Now, since it's the inverse, I'm going to take those points and just flip them. Okay, So I'm going to start with the points 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, and 3, 1. So this would be on the graph of just y equals log base 3 of x. But I look at this, and it's been translated 1 to the right. So it follows the same rules as our translations from before. So everything, including our asymptote, is going to translate 1 to the right. So before, we would have an asymptote at um, y equals, I'm sorry, x equals 0. Now it moves to x equals 1. 
Okay. We also um, are going to add one to every x coordinate here in these columns to get the point one and one third, negative one, two, zero, and four, one. So go ahead and graph those. And we get this function here, which would be the inverse of that, um, the inverse function of, you know, y equals three to the x. Okay. Now in problem 13, we have um, the natural log, okay? And the natural log is the inverse of your exponential function, okay? So this has a base of e. This is y equals log base e of x plus two minus four. So this would be our mother function, the inverse function would be e to the x, y equals e to the x. So we already know some points on the line y equals e to the x, or the, the curve y equals e to the x, and those points would be negative one, one over e, zero, one, and one e. So now we're gonna take those points and we're going to put them on the inverse, which means that they would become their opposites. x, y would turn into y, x. So these points would now become one over e, negative one, one, zero, and e, one. Okay, now I'm going to translate these. I have a horizontal shift left two, so this goes left two, and this is gonna go down four. So left two, I'm gonna take away two from every x value, and I'm gonna subtract four from every y value. Okay, so I end up with these uh, coordinates here, so just double check that you got those correct. Now when you're graphing these, remember you're gonna estimate one over e is close to 0.37. So 0.37 minus two is gonna place this somewhere, you know, negative 1.63. So I want to graph that coordinate here as close as I can, negative 1.63, negative 5. And then the one down here that's not as easy to see, there is 2.7 minus 2, so this is going to be about 0.7, negative 3. So go ahead and graph that. Okay, so I just want to note that the uh, hor or vertical asymptote here has been shifted left 2, okay, because everything in this graph is going to be shifted left 2. Um, and then I didn't quite show where this is crossing yet because I wanted to mention Remember how exponential growth explodes very quickly? Well, the log, because it's the inverse, actually grows very, 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 very slowly. So um, when we're graphing this, I want you to notice also that we don't have the exact x um, and y intercept here. So we don't know what this y intercept value is. We don't know what that x intercept is either. What I want you to do is be able to find that, and you're gonna do this algebraically. Okay, so let's use what you know of basics um, you know, back to basically algebra one, an x-intercept, so to find the x-intercept, you know that y equals zero. So you're just gonna plug that right into your original function here. So zero equals the natural log of x plus two minus four. Now if I solve for this, I'm gonna add four to the other side because this is just gonna become a pretty basic um, natural log equation here, or log equation. This has a base of e. This is log base e. So this is e to the fourth power equals x plus two. And now I'm gonna isolate the x by subtracting two. So I have e to the fourth minus two equals x. This coordinate is about, e to the fourth is I think like 50, it's 2.7 to the fourth power. So um, I think I calculated this beforehand and it was like 54. So 54 minus two is gonna be roughly 50. So this coordinate all the way out here is about 50 something comma zero. So you can see how it really grows very, very, very slowly to get from you know negative four to zero. It took a huge um, you know, range of x values to get there. So it grows really, really slowly. Now the y-intercept is a lot easier than solving for the x-intercept here. Um, that's just gonna be plugging in. So to find the y-intercept, we plug in x is zero back into our function, so I kind of lost it there. But our function here is y equals the natural log of x plus two minus four. So I plug in zero here, and I get the natural log of two minus four. Now this is just a number, I have the y by itself. I don't have to do any more work. This number, that y-intercept, although it looks kind of funky, is just a normal number, natural log of two minus four. Okay, that's our y-intercept. So that was a pretty tough one. Um, we're gonna finish off with a basic one. I'll have you guys do this on your own. This would be the mother function 
and the inverse of this would be y equals 2 dx. So you're going to start with those points. Make sure that you realize you have a reflection here over the um, x-axis. So it's a flip over the x-axis. And you have a horizontal shift right 1. All right, um, please try that problem just to verify that you know what you're doing. Check with the key. Nice job. I'll see you in class mañana.